I'm Glenn Spencer. I run a group called American Border Patrol. It's a nonprofit group. We've been on the border here in southern Arizona. The border's right over my shoulder here. You can see the wall or the fence. Uh, for 15 years, our job has been for those 15 years to use technology to bring the story about the border to the American people and also to show how technology can be used to solve the border problem. I'm talking to you today from the deck of my home. Uh, I have a ranch that right here on the border. It runs down. My southern neighbor is Mexico. Uh, seven miles over that way is Fort Huachuca, the headquarters of Army Intelligence. Uh, half a mile that way is the um, San Pedro River that flows out of Mexico. We're about seven mi 70 miles south of, of, of Tucson. As I mentioned, our job is to use technology to show what's going on. Today I'm going to give you a tour of the ranch using this drone we call Hermes. And uh, I'll be flying it with this radio controller system here. I'll be watching what Hermes sees on this first person video uh, and I'll actually be flying it from here. We'll be looking at the ranch, we'll be looking at a test range that we've been using for years to test technology. The most recent technology that we've been testing is called Sidearm. This is a sidearm sensor. Sidearm stands for Seismic Detection and Ranging Mechanism. It's the latest. This has a range of one person walking about 450 feet. Border Patrol sensors range of about 30 feet. So I'll, once again, I'll be launching Hermes from over here. Uh, we'll be going first down to the river and then along the border and we'll show you the highlights of what American Border Patrol does uh, and where we are. So without further ado, I will launch Hermes. A little windy today, but I think we'll be all right. So what we'll do is we'll get Hermes up to altitude here, a little bit of altitude, take out over here. Turn Hermes around. Uh, it's beeping because it does not like being this close to solid objects. So I'll make it happy and get it out of here. We'll get Hermes turn, turned around. I see a big lawn here. Uh, at one point I had seven German Shepherds. Uh, the Magnificent Seven. That's why I put the lawn in. So we'll turn Hermes around. I have to get some altitude here because I have to maintain a uh, line of sight with Hermes. What I'm going to do is start out, we'll head for the San Pedro River. Now, some people think of a river as a big body of flowing water, but actually it's defined by the area that it drains. Now, in this area, it's kind of the desert area, there won't be much water in the San Pedro today, but during the summertime, we have monsoon rains that will make this river roar. Now, the San Pedro is a rather special uh, place around here. It is a special riparian area uh, managed by the Bureau of Land Management. Actually, more than 50% of all bird species in the United States can be found one time or another up here in the San Pedro River. Now I have to keep it up high. Oh, this down there. I'm going to go right over to the river. Now these are cottonwood trees. Uh, this is a well-known drug smuggling corridor and it's not difficult to understand why. There's very excellent cover in there for smugglers. Now the Border Patrol isn't allowed to patrol in the river unless they can see something or chase somebody in uh, hot pursuit. Now that's sort of understandable. It's a sen sensitive environmental area. Some argue uh, that they really should be allowed uh, uh, to chase or uh, patrol in there. Now, we're going to come up here and you'll see me, if I can get it close, because I've got a line of sight problem uh, in this area. 
If you look down, there's a Border Patrol that is parked right down here 24-7. Uh, That's the border right there. On the left, there's a fence that stretches to the east. That's a cheaper fence, been there a number of years, 13 feet high, made out of mesh, easily cut through, and they cut through it all the time. I will twist around here, and you'll be able to see the Border Patrol down there. Now, he's parked there 24-7, uh, and uh, as are a few other spots along the border. They actually stay in one spot and guard that spot. We think there's a better way to do that, and we'll explain that later. Now, along here, the actual border is uh, the, it's not a fence. Uh, this is a vehicle barrier. And the reason they say they have to have it here uh, is that uh, these are railroad rails to stop vehicles from coming across because of the possible flooding of the San Pedro River. Now this spot right here is a favorite crossing point, I will tell you. Now starting right here, just pretty soon, is an 18-foot steel beam fence that has been there about nine years. Uh, it is, we found, very effective. We used to call this the Wild West. And once they put that in, we've referred to it as a gated community. Now I'm going to turn along here and uh, head, head west. This fence goes for about five miles and then it becomes uh, a vehicle barrier again for 30 miles. Now right here uh, is the American Border Patrol flags along the border display. Ten years ago we started a practice. We had our members or supporters send in small flags with a little note attached with a message for the government. Now we put them up on the barbed wire fence. Now, then when the, when the Border Patrol put this fence in, this fence, we actually put them on the fence itself. Now, they weren't too happy with that, so we actually had to build our own fences to put these flags on. And you can see here, it says, Save the United States, uh, Secure the Border First. Securing the border first has been a theme of American Border Patrol for years. Here is our, there's a stage over here where we have entertainment each year. We put these up on the 4th of July weekend and we have entertainments. This was our pride and joy a couple of years ago. Now, there's over 150,000 flags. In the heavy winds, they are blown down, but we pick them up and dutifully burn them uh, according to practice. Now, let's head west along here. And what we're looking at, we're going to see in a minute. Notice the deep washes. I'm going to talk about that a little later. Uh, notice the number six here. What that is, is 600 feet from a sensor line I'll be t showing you. This is a test area we've been using for years. People will walk along this test line and they will be detected by the sensors. And we have cameras that can look down, or drones, and we can see where they are detected. That's 400 feet, 200 feet, zero feet. Now right here is the actual sensor line. It runs east and west. Uh, it goes a half mile. We can make it longer. This could make it 2,000 miles. That runs east and west. The sensors are buried. I showed you that sensor earlier. Now let's turn around. Uh, this is sort of the business end of American Border Patrol. I've got to get some altitude because I'm going to lose uh, contact. Down here. Now that's our big shop. Uh, it is a fully equipped shop. We have an electronics lab. We can build our own circuit, printed circuits, test them. Uh, we have a fully equipped shop CNC machine. We actually use to cut out those big letters down there. Now, what you're seeing down here, you see the little helipads? 
we have two of these Hermes and what happens is we have the sensors online when the people start walking along the line and they're detected we actually launch Hermes from those two helipads. People red. People red. People red. Now just beyond the helipad, you'll see a little yellow airplane. Well, that is used to uh, test the ability of sidearm to detect low-flying aircraft. Uh, I have the joy of flying that in these tests. Now, just as a point of interest, uh, this is our little guest house. We call it the Coronado House because it actually overlooks the very spot where the famous explorer Bill Coronado crossed into the United States in 1540. Now, we look right over that spot uh, in this guest house. Now let's head back, let's head back west. I want to show you some things. I have to get a little altitude in order to maintain contact uh, with, with Hermes by radio and direct contact from where I am. Now, as we head west, we're going to turn right toward the border. I don't want you to notice something that I mentioned before. These deep washes, these create a real problem for the Border Patrol because they need line of sight, either whether it's cameras, individuals, radar, whatever, they have to see people. Well, the smugglers know that. They know that. And so they use it. They hide in these washes. All right, now let's look at this wash down in here. Look at these deep washes. Sidearm does not require line of sight. Sidearm detects seismic movement, people walking, air, the noise of aircraft flying. Now, what I'm going to do is I have to get a little altitude, and it solves many of the problems of the of the washes, the deep washes. Now I'm going to come north. Over this way. Now I want to show you something very interesting. We're coming up on a Border Patrol uh, camera tower. That's right next to my house. Some people say they put it in to watch me, but they didn't. Now what I'm going to do, I have to position myself down here on the deck a little bit to get a better line of sight. Just a moment. And um, here we go. I'm going to try to get up behind this tower. Here we go. There is the tower. I want to get down here. Let's get an eye level uh, with the cameras themselves. There we go. 
Now that's what they can see. Look at all those deep washes. There's the border fence itself. They can see beyond that. And by the way, if it was much taller, they, they're talking about a 30-foot fence that does block some of the view in New Mexico. So look at this. You'll see if we get a little closer. They don't know we're here and we won't hurt anybody. So we'll look around and you can see that they would have a diff difficult time seeing people uh, in those deep washes. So now what we're going to do, get back over here, back to our grass. And now I'm going to have Hermes come home. Now the system is designed and we have a design concept. You saw the launch pads down there, those helipads. The idea is to have silos uh, where Hermes would sit inside or the drones would sit inside, launch on alarm by sidearm, go out through the top of the silo, it would open up, go out, find the suspects, track them for up to 20 minutes, and then when they're finished, come back and land automatically in the silo and swap their batteries. So they would be ready to go again. The idea here is that instead of cameras like that one, they're blind to most parts of the border, uh, we have a system that can get right down close and personal with these people or whoever it is or whatever it is and, and send video back to uh, the Border Patrol, whether there's a guy in a vehicle or the uh, headquarters or a Border Patrol station. Then it would come in and land automatically, swap its, its uh, camera uh, batteries, and be ready to go again. And once again, uh, sidearm could be installed all along the border in a matter of weeks or months, okay? And be ready to go. The idea we've had is that the president could use this to decide where he needs his fence. You see? All right, I had to step away for a minute to maintain live of sight with Hermes coming down. Uh, Hermes number two is uh, sitting over there, uh, landed safely as usual. I hope you found this tour informative and, and useful. I, I hope you have a better understanding of the problems the Border Patrol faces and some of the ideas that we might have uh, that can help them. I want to make uh, one point. I've been down here on the border for 15 years watching uh, the Border Patrol work. And I want to say this without hesitation. While I've had some differences with people in Washington, D.C., <laughs> pretty severe differences, the agents down here on the border are professionals. They are dedicated to doing their job to protect America. And we really need to give them every tool that they need to get that job done because they want to do it. By the way, American Border Patrol, a nonprofit, also is working to help uh, protect America, and it needs all the help uh, that you can give it. If you have any questions, if you have a group that would like to come down here to the border and take a tour of see what we do, uh, contact me. The best way to do that is through my email, glenn at americanpatrol.com. Not American Border Patrol. glenn at americanpatrol.com, and I'll get back to you. But once again, thank you. Thank you for watching. And um, once again, support the Border Patrol and help protect America. Thanks a lot.